Okay, the last topic we're going to learn in this chapter is the box model. We're about to transition in the next chapter into how to do positioning with CSS, and learning the box model is a, a, a great first step to, towards doing that. Let's, um, let's begin working on our About Me. We haven't done much in there recently, so let's go to About Me. We have these pictures we added. Let's stick a uh, paragraph in here. This is a great paragraph about me. Okay, so the box model it simply refers to a set of three um, styling attributes that can affect the space taken up by a single attribute. So, for example, as it is right now, uh, let me save this one, go back to uh, this page about me. I got to, you know, I got to get rid of that on hover. That's going to really bug me. Sorry, one second. I know we did that in the last video, but uh, I can't take that. Save. All right, that's more like it, just the underline. So each, um, certain elements are what we call inline elements and others are block elements. An inline element is one that you can use that won't force a line break before or after it. So for example, uh, you may notice that um, A is an inline element. I can have a link, if you remember back here on my resume page, I can have a link that doesn't force a line break before it or after it. For example, if I come in here to resume and say, see my Wikipedia, or here it is right here. See my Wikipedia page. Let's take the word page and move it outside that link so it's right here. I'll even put a period there. So now the link is only around the word Wikipedia. If I come back here and refresh. Oh, I forgot my space right here. There we go. That A tag, it doesn't break the word page down onto another line. So any element that doesn't force a line break before or after, we call an inline element. Every other element that does force a line break uh, is a block element. So uh, for example, um, P is a block element. OL, UL, each of those, and LI, they're all forcing line breaks. Those are block elements. How about image? Well, Homer Simpson does appear on the next line but image actually is an inline element. The reason why this is on another line is not because the image forced it right here, but because the H4 forced a double space before it and after it. So what does it have to do with what we're talking about? Over here on About Me, um, the box model will reveal exactly which ones are inline and block elements. And uh, I'll show you how this works. In this great paragraph About Me, I wanna add a span tag Let's go back to about me that bolds the words great paragraph. So let's put span like we learned a few videos ago right here. Great paragraph. And let's just simply bold it for now. Um, class equals bold. Okay. So uh, refresh this. Great. We're all working. So the box model refers to three properties uh, padding margin and border. Let's show you how each of those are going to work here. For starters, uh, let's put, um, let, let's use custom styles to use all of these so that we don't apply them to everything. Um, let's go to our styles here and down at the bottom we'll start some new ones. So box, excuse me, dot box one. Let's start by messing with the border. That's the easiest one to first learn. Border, and you see we've got a few options here. I can specify overall border, uh, border bottom, I'm gonna skip block for now, uh, border image, border left, right, and border top. So each one of those you'll notice has three options, color, width, and style. Let's start by specifying an overall border, uh, width, border dash width right there. Let's say one px for one pixel. Where should we use this? Let's apply it on about me here to uh, this paragraph right here. Class box one. Okay, let's take a look at this and see what it does. Oh, what did I forget? Did I forget to save something? Box one, border, oh, uh, Specifying a border width doesn't do any good unless we also say border style. Its default is set to none. 
And so right now it doesn't matter that the width is one, there is no border, so it won't apply. So we need to change this to solid. Refresh. Here's our border. We can see that the P tag is a block element because the border uh, goes all the way to the end of the page, which means that the P is forcing a line break after it. So therefore the border naturally goes all the way to the end. Whereas if we put the border just around the A tag, right here, class bold, we'll also add box one. If we specify just around the A tag, see the border just goes around the inline element. And since the A doesn't force a line break, it goes just right there. Okay, awesome. Let's now specify uh, a border color. Let's go to styles, border dash color. We're going to make this, I don't know, green for the fun of it. Great. Let's see that work. Um, yeah, it turned green, but it's kind of tough to see, isn't it? Better make it something like uh, light green. There we go. There we go. That's a bit easier to see now. Um, we can also specify all these at once. Border one. Uh, I, don't know, I can't remember the order these go in. I don't know that it actually matters, though. Let's see. Um, pink. There we go. Let's refresh it now. There we go. So this is overriding all of these. Uh, two of them are the same, so it didn't make any changes. Um, but because this comes last, it's now closest to the text and overrides those that are above it. So you can specify all of those options all in one line. So let's leave that now. Or I can furthermore go border bottom and give it its own uh, uh, options. Dotted, two pixels, and red, I guess. All right, let's save that. Refresh. There we go. We see the bottom on each. Because this border is uh, doubled up going around that option, it's a little bit thicker right there. So let's learn the next one. Uh, the next option is, and what I want to do is, let's copy this paragraph so you can see each of them. Let's go back to About Me and copy, paste, paste. And let's make a couple more here, Box 2 and Box 3. Box 2 and Box 3 just so you can see how all of these are going to work. So let's make our next one here, box two. Um, actually, let's, you know what we're going to do back here in About Me? Let's include all of them. Box one, space, box two. Then I don't have to, actually only box two on this one. Bold. Box one, box two, then on this one, one, two, three, and on this one, one, two, three. Okay, let me stop, give you a second, take a look and see what it is I'm doing here. I want my styles to build off and include the styles from the previous one all at once here. So now in my style sheet, I've got to save that. My style sheet, I'm not going to mess with border again. I'm going to leave border on box one. And now let's mess with um, uh, padding. So padding, I can also apply separately to the top, right, left, and bottom. Or all at once, I can say padding four pixels. Padding represents the space between the border and the content. So when I refresh this, uh, oh, did I save that padding? Oh, gosh, don't forget my colon there. All right, notice where I applied uh, box two, I've got an extra four pixels all around the content. So, but again, because padding only refers to the difference between the border and the content, I still have these borders overlapping each other, this one and the one above it. Let's make that, uh, or now let's mess. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to do it, but as you can see, you can do padding and you can specify differently for left, right, top, and bottom. But let's just leave it right there as it is. Now box three. The final element of the box model is margin. Let's make this one five pixels. 
And this one, because I'm obsessive compulsive and I like numbers, multiples of five, we'll stick with that one. Okay, so now I've specified margin of five pixels. Let's refresh this one. So now here's what we see. Oh, did I, uh, did I make sure to include this on about me? Box three, there it is. Okay, here, here we go. Here's what's going on. So my margin is the space between the border and the other elements around it. So border is easy to understand because you can see it. Padding is the space between the border and the content. Margin is the space between the uh, element and the next nearest element. Now, with an inline element, uh, notice it's added extra space here to the left and to the right but it already notices that because a paragraph has more than four pixels, a double space before it and after it, it didn't add space above or beneath it. However, here on this paragraph element, it did add an extra five pixels to the right, the left and right, but it didn't push it down any further from the one above it because there was already a double space there and more than five pixels. Now, if we increase that to something like 50, save, and refresh. Now you're going to see, okay, I've got a double space wasn't enough to count for 50 pixels. So it pushed this one much further down, added 50 there, 50 there, 50 over here. But again, on an inline element, it won't do that because there's no hard return added. It just added 50 pixels to the left and to the right. So the reason why this is important is because in the next chapter, we're going to start positioning elements in different places around a page. And it's going to be tough to un to understand why elements are positioned the way they are and you're going to want to move things around to align and to do that you're often going to mess with border margin and padding to make that happen so let me see if i can give you a little quiz question here if i um let's make one more style i'm going to call this one box four and i'm going to give it a um Padding of, no, I'm going to make this tricky. Padding left of 10 pixels, a margin of 100 pixels, and a border right of solid 5 pixels and blue. So I'm going to wrap that around an image here and about me uh, around this Simpson family image. I'm going to set this image's width equal to, I'm going to scale it down to 50 pixels. I don't need the px, I just need 50, that means pixels. So now let's add my class equals box 4. Here's my question for you. How much space, how much width in particular, how many pixels wide will this image occupy? So the image itself, the content is 50. Let's save it. Go back here, refresh this. Here it is right here. All right. Oh, I forgot to save styles. Save that one too. Refresh. There we go. So how many pixels is this thing occupying side to side? Let's add it up. The image itself is 50 pixels, right? Uh, here on the style sheet, we have a padding left of 10 pixels, margin of 100, border of 5. All right, well, let's add it up. 50 for the content, for the image itself. The border here only exists on the right-hand side, so another 5 pixels for that border, 55. Margin is all around, but we're only concerned about width, but this is margin on both sides. So I've got to add 100 for the right and 100 for the left. So I'm up to 55, 155, 255 for both sides of the margin. And then I've got a padding over on, only on the left-hand side. So uh, 255, 265. So this image right here, from the side of the page, over to the margin, 100 pixels to the right of the padding here, of the border, it's occupying 265 pixels total. 
So as a reminder, border you can see, border is in between the margin and the padding. Margin is always everything outside the border, padding is everything inside the border. And that's the box model.